Hello investors, thank you so much for joining me. My name is Michael from Deep Value Returns on Seeking Alpha. Today I want to talk about Salesforce. Salesforce reported their Q4 uh, 2022 results. I'm going to go through that. The guide for uh, fiscal 23 to grow at approximately 21% uh, KEGA. So they kind of just slightly upped um, their revenue guidance. Um, this is, you know, what they do. They kind of always just tick along, just slightly nudging forward that guidance. It, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those businesses that really knows how to manage investors' expectations. Uh, interestingly, with the benefit of hindsight, it looks like Salesforce paid approximately 23 times forward sales for Slack. Uh, you know, a very strong, very good multiple, I believe. With everything that's happened in the market, even with meaningful, uh, with a lot of companies selling off, I think that, you know, they did a really good uh, job here. Uh, so this is the core, right? So Salesforce is really good at drip, drip, dripping positive news for investors and delivering a lack of negative surprises. So this quarter was no different. And um, before we go in further, just remember the fiscal year and the calendar year are misaligned. So I'm only going to be reporting about the fiscal year. Okay. So, I mean, look here. So. When it comes to it, tech has been really battered um, in the last several months, and there's no question that the cost of capital has dramatically changed, right? It, if you're a mid or small cap tech company, or you invest in those types of companies, it's been demolished. And in that context, Salesforce has not done too badly. You know, it's been really, really just um, a stalwart. Now, uh, you could say that it's because it's probably a bit of a larger company and larger tech companies haven't really been hit as much as that. But I think that there's more to it than that. And I'll come to that in a minute. Um, what's particularly interesting to me is that there's been a lot of companies that have been reporting what I believe to be reasonably good uh, results. And this tech, this, the stock has just been absolutely demolished in the after hours reaction. And that has not been the case with Salesforce. So Salesforce, it's actually, you know, um, they reported just, you know, nothing really to kind of raise an eyebrow to. And the stock is kind of is up about nearly, nearly uh, just uh, 4% in the after hours. So, you know, the investors seem to have taken on this quite nicely. Um, and, you know, for the period ahead, the guiding for fiscal 23 to grow at approximately 21%. Um, it's just a very, very steady compounder of 20% that they consistently report. And, you know, it's a machine. It's Salesforce, you know, when everything is said and done, this it, they continue to show that despite size, despite its large size, it just takes along at 20%, that 20% compounding machine. It's really, they're doing terrifically. Um, so during the earnings call, you know, um, Mark Benioff, the, the co-CEO, uh, is always super upbeat, you know, he's a salesman, obviously, Salesforce, right? So it's always talking about the company and doing amazing things. Uh, it was good to hear about uh, Ohana during the call. Uh, if you've read Lessons from Titans, you'll seen that many of the biggest and most successful companies in the history uh, at their time, from uh, like say Honeywell at the time, uh, General Electric, uh, Boeing, you know, when they've had good good decades or so, uh, they've had this kind of um, workforce, um, this training program for work for their workforce. And to hear uh, Mark Benioff talk about that uh, during the earnings call and how uh, the, the sense of team building continues to go on in the company, that's really nice to hear. Here's a quote that I picked up from the earnings call. Uh, we continue to see just tremendous Tremendous demand from customers on every industry, every geography, every product, you know, but that's how, you know, um, Mark talks about, uh, you know, he's, he's always talking about everything is always perfect. Um, now, when everything is said and done, you know, the, he talks about this being the best financial quarter in the company's history and, you know, the numbers speak for themselves. So, yeah, maybe he is right to be so upbeat because when everything, when the cards fell down, he's delivering and the message is very, very clear, right? So there's a digital transformation undergoing, everyone knows this, and Salesforce is growing into those tailwinds. So it's just gonna continue batting along. This is something that's very interesting. Now, I put out this question, do profits matter? Because last year, 
talking about profitability of a company was just a waste of time. Nobody cared about it. It was like invested at any price, invested at any price, invested at any price. Right now, the landscape has slightly changed and people are much more cognizant about profitability for the long term, okay? And the long term is no longer like 10 years out, how the next decade is gonna look. The long term is like <laughs> next year. How, what, is the company guiding for a, a profitable target in the next year? And look here, right? So on a gap basis, including the amortization of intangibles and including stock-based comp, they're guiding already for three point, for approximately three to three point five gap operating earnings. So I mean, um, gap operating margin. Pardon me. So I think that this is really, really attractive. Um, there are not that many companies out there that are guiding to grow at approximately twenty percent on top line and reporting those uh, gap operating margins. You know, when everything is actually said and done, all those pesky costs added back in. So I think that this is you know quite attractive, and. It's good to see that the 120% margin expansion on the gross uh, on the on the gap metric. So I think that they're doing a terrific job. Now I just wanted to unpick this slightly and talk about the Slack acquisition. So when it, oh sorry before that um, they have on their balance sheet approximately 9.4 billion of uh, cash and cash equivalents. On the other side of the equation, they got about 10.6 billion of net debt of debt. So it comes up with 1.2 billion of net debt. So if you think about it, right, this is, with so many stocks having meaningfully sold off, they would they would have been in a really good position if their balance sheet let, allows some more flexibility to go on an acquisition spree. Because this is what they do best. You know, they're very acquisitive as a company, and they just haven't got that much flexibility to make a needle moving acquisition. They pay for Slack approximately uh, 28 billion, just under 28 billion. And as it transpires, that was a really good acquisition. Okay, they put they, it's a, it, they reported approximately 565 million of net of purchasing accounting uh, for the two quarters. So you know you can kind of extrapolate that to 1.3 billion for the year. So 23 times forward sales is a really good multiple that they paid for the stock. Okay, with the lack of hindsight, lack of, with, with I've got hindsight now, but they didn't have that at the time. So their visibility into the business they, it was a very good acquisition. Okay. Now, if you think about it, right, they can't do another 28 billion acquisition. You know, it's just not going to be possible for them because the balance sheet is already in a net debt position. So they kind of restricted somewhat and I can't see them really diluting shareholders quite significantly again. So they're just going to have to digest those acquisitions and it's going to be tough for them, but it's always tough for them, right? Um, but again, you know, everything circles back to this, right? So many businesses that are growing at 20%, they're, they're unprofitable right now. So to be able to report that gap uh, operating margins, I think that's really attractive. Now, this is the thing I've already alluded to several times. Salesforce is not one of the companies that gets a very high multiple. Compared to other SaaS stocks like, like uh, Workday or ServiceNow, those trade at higher multiples. And it's ironic because Salesforce is one of the original a SaaS businesses and it hasn't been rewarded with a SaaS multiple. So it's kind of interesting, right? If you think about it. And you know, when multi when the multiples are meaningfully compressed for those high comp for high growth companies, so I point in the screen there in blue you can see service now, the multiples meaningfully compressed. In that context, Salesforce hasn't seen its multiple meaningfully compressed. It's just kind of slightly compressed and it, that's the probably the advantage of being a value investor. If you if you pay a low multiple for the company, you know, you have low expectations and you can leave plenty of space for you to continue to just positively reward shareholders by driving the business, the intrinsic business, the compounding forward. So I think that that's quite interesting. Um, I, I wanted to highlight that, you know, what they do best is this lack of uh, negative surprises. So I'm going to go through here and you can see that they can, on the top line, they beat a uh, consensus by nearly always just two, three percent, uh, and it's just a kind of steady drip, you know, that is kind of guide forward, beat, increase the guidance slightly, beat. It's just, it's, it's, it's like clockwork. Uh, this is all that, you know, for pre countless quarters of them just beating on the top line. Um, so I think that when everything is said and done, having you know, that long-term guidance and ample visibility into its financials, the lack of negative surprises, all that 
con- that consistency, I think that it's an interesting business. Uh, that being said, I am, I'll be a bit more selective and I'm going to deploy my own capital into other opportunities. If you want to find out those opportunities, don't forget to check out my marketplace. It's right there above the screen, Deep Value Returns. Come on board and I highlight for you high quality, actionable investment ideas. Okay? Thank you so much for listening. See you soon. Bye-bye.